The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Philadelphia brand is far and away America's favorite cream cheese. That's because it's so creamy white, so delicately rich, and so fresh tasting. But remember, there is only one Philadelphia cream cheese. It's the brand that's made by Kraft and guaranteed fresh. So when you buy cream cheese, always look for the name Philadelphia brand right on each silvery package. Well, it's dinner time at the Great Gildersleeve's house, and it looks like Leroy will be the first to finish. I wonder if the fact that little Brenda Knickerbocker is waiting for him across the street has anything to do with it. I don't want any dessert, Unc. Leroy, what's wrong with your appetite? In the spring, a young man's fancy turns to love, Unky. Even Leroy. Oh, Marge. Now, Marge, we don't tease. It's time Leroy learned to be at ease around girls. Is uh, Brenda waiting for you, Leroy? <laughs> You see what I mean, Marjorie? He needs this sort of thing. She wants me to meet a friend of hers from Baltimore that just got here. She does? Well, as long as you're having Brenda over tomorrow night, why don't you invite her visitor to your little party, too? Yeah, I guess I'd better. <laughs> little Leroy with two girlfriends. Oh, that's a switch. Last year, all he wanted to do was wiggle his ears and listen to the Lone Ranger. Yeah, now, Marjorie... I wonder who's at the door. I'll bet it isn't the Lone Ranger. I'll go see him. Never mind, Bertie. Leroy's gone. Jet propelled. Hi, Brenda. Hello, Leroy. <laughs> Cute little girl. I just finished supper. I didn't mean to rush you, but it seemed I was waiting for you so long. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> that boy. Leroy, where are your manners? Why don't you invite little Brenda in? Oh, you want to come inside, Brenda? Oh, thank you, but I want you to come out and meet my house guest from Baltimore. Oh, is she outside? She? <laughs> Leroy, it's a boy. A boy? What's this? I thought it was a girl. Well, I didn't tell you before. I didn't want you to worry. Gosh. Come on, Leroy. I want you to meet Gerald. Come on up, Gerald. Well, Marjorie, it looks like real Leroy is going to have a little competition. Leroy Forrester, this is Gerald Mason. Hi. I'm delighted to meet you, Master Forrester, I'm sure. <laughs> no competition there. <laughs> so long, folks. Goodbye. Yeah, goodbye, Leroy. Have a good time. The Bullards have a lot of visitors, don't they, Yankee? Yeah, but old Moneybags Bullard can afford it. I think little Gerald's cute. And isn't he intelligent looking? Well, Leroy would look that way, too, if he wore those horn-rimmed glasses and a bow tie. And a little Hamburg. <laughs> Did you notice that panic-stricken look on Leroy's face when he discovered Brenda's friend was a boy? Don't you worry, Marjorie. Leroy can hold his own. When he starts doing handstands and cartwheels for Brenda, that poor kid from Baltimore won't stand a chance. Uh, pass me Leroy's dessert. <laughs> Gerald play the violin beautifully, Leroy. Yeah. Oh, that was simply super, Gerald. Thank you, Brenda. I just love boys with talent. Yeah? Hey, Gerald! Yes, Leroy? I bet I can chin myself more times than you can. Well, Leroy, I'm afraid chinning myself isn't the proper conditioning for my fingers. My tutor wouldn't approve. Okay. I bet I can hold my breath longer than you can. <laughs> oh, Leroy, let's not do silly things. Let's turn on the radio and dance. Dance? That's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Oh, I don't know. I've had a dancing instructor since I was five. Are you kidding? Certainly not. 
I find it a definite aid to my footwork and fencing. Do you fence, Leroy? Fence? Well, you dance, don't you, Leroy? Well... Don't you, Leroy? Well, sure. Yeah, I dance all the time. Practically. <laughs> well, th then I'll have the first dance with you, Leroy. But, gosh, turn on the radio, Gerald. I, I don't think I'd better dance right now, Brenda. Why not? Well, my uncle says it isn't good to exercise so soon after supper. i better get home. But, Leroy... Well, if Leroy doesn't want to dance, voulez-vous danser avec moi, mademoiselle? Oh, mais oui, monsieur. Merci. Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> so early? Yeah. But you could have played till nine o'clock. Oh, who wants to play with those smart aleck kids over at the Bullards? But Leroy, you and little Brenda have been getting along so well together. Not since that Gerald came, the sissy. Yeah. No, Leroy, you shouldn't call him that. Gerald seems like a nice little boy. Why don't you go back and play? You have a whole hour. And listen to him saw on the violin. Does he play the violin? Yeah, and dances. Who? Hmm? Who wants to dance? I'd much rather go upstairs and listen to my radio. Well, all right, my boy. If that's the way you feel, go ahead. Sure. Who wants to dance? I'd much rather go up and play my little radio. Leroy, come back here. What's the matter, my boy? He's been taking dancing since he was five. The little sissy. Uh, Leroy, you shouldn't get upset because a little sissy can dance. I mean the little boy. He can do everything better than I can. He's got talent and private tutors for everything. I'm no good. Leroy, that's not true. I bet little Brenda doesn't think that. Oh, she doesn't even look at me when he's around. That vooly voo stuff. <laughs> All they do is talk Spanish to each other. <laughs> Leroy, that bully boo stuff is French. It is? You see, I'm no good. <laughs> now, my boy, get your chin up off your chest. Gerald may be able to dance and do things like that, but I'll bet you can do things he can't do. You have a lot of talent, Leroy. Yeah? Like what? Well, you've always been pretty good at... I mean, you can... <laughs> Maybe you better go up and play your radio at that. <laughs> Well, if it ain't the water commissioner, step right up in the chair, Commish. One bother, no waiting. That's how efficient I am. <laughs> I'm not having any work done today, Floyd. I'm meeting Leroy here. He needs a trim for his party tonight. Oh, kid's birthday or something? No, he's having a party for Brenda, the little girl staying at the Bullards. And her guest, Master Gerald Mason. Yeah? Got the kid crashing into society, huh? No, it's not that, Floyd. They're well-bred children, and I'm encouraging Leroy to associate with them because I think it'll do him good. He seems to be suffering from an inferiority complex. Kid feels like a round peg among the squares, huh? <laughs> well, not exactly. He enjoys being with little Brenda, but I think this boy from Baltimore is lording it over him. Yeah, I know the kind. What's he got that Leroy ain't got? Well, he plays the violin and dances. Oh. Leroy don't dance, huh? With those feet, it doesn't come easy for Leroy. <laughs> Commission, you know what I'd do if some guy tried to show me up in front of my girl? Well? I'd punch him right in the nose. Now, Floyd, that wouldn't accomplish anything. And what if he hit him hard enough? Uh, Fighting's a great leveler. Floyd, I can't encourage Leroy to fight little Gerald. Uh, He's a visitor in our neighborhood. Besides, a boy with his background wouldn't know how to fight. Against Leroy, he wouldn't stand a chance. <laughs> Leroy! What happened, kid? Do you mean a nose, dirty guy? Who hit you? Gerald! Leroy, how did that happen? I called him a sissy and he hit me in the nose, a dirty guy! <laughs> but, Leroy, why didn't you defend yourself? I tried to, but he ducked! Yeah, what? He's got a boxing tutor, too! <laughs> a 
from now on, you're going to have one. boy, Commissioner. Come on, Leroy. Let's go home and find the boxing gloves. Here's the gloves, Mr. Gillsleeve. They was hanging behind the furnace. Oh, thank you, Bertie. Uh, the heat has hardened the leather a bit. Well, we'll train right down here in the basement. Put on the gloves, Leroy. But, Uncle, what's the use? Cheryl's better than me. Well, that's why we're having this workout. So you'll be able to hold your own with it. Your uncle's right, Leroy. Everybody ought to know how to box. I learned that when I went with that prize fighter. Oh? <laughs> All right, Leroy. My guard's up. You try to hit me. Okay. Leroy, you can hit harder than that. Oh, gosh. And don't close your eyes when you swing. No wonder Gerald licked you. Why don't you try the old one-two, Leroy? The one-two? Yeah. Just lead with your left and cross with your right. That's what Joe Lewis would do. One-two. Let's see. Lead with my left and cross with my right. That's it. That's the old one-two. All right, Leroy. Now, you try to hit me again. Okay. One, two. Oh. Oh. Nice blow you landed, Leroy. <laughs> Bertie. You mean that's all there is to it? One, two. One, two. All right, Leroy, that's enough. I think you're ready for Gerald now. You bet. I can't wait to get at that guy. Uncle Mort, Leroy. Yes, Marjorie? There's someone here to see you. Oh, who? Gerald. Gerald? He'd probably come over here to start something. Hurry up those stairs. I'm ready for him. One, two. No, one, two. Leroy, you stay down here. What? I'll go up and have a talk with him first. Oh. Uh... Besides, I don't want you to hit him on our property. <laughs> Make sure your swelled up nose, Mr. Gillsleeve. He won't want to tackle Leroy. <laughs> yeah. Now, just leave this to me, Bertie. Gerald's sitting in the living room, Monkey, with his hat in his hand. He certainly is a polite little boy. Yes, sir. Here's Uncle Mort, Gerald. Good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello, Gerald. Oh, thank you, Miss Forrester, for conveying my message. What? Oh, you're welcome, Gerald. Now then, Mr. Gildersleeve, shall we sit down? Sit down? Oh, oh, oh yes, yes, sit down, Gerald. Thank you. <laughs> I suppose you're wondering why I came over. Well, if you're looking for Leroy, he'll be up in a minute. Oh, yes, I'm looking forward to meeting Leroy again. He's looking forward to meeting you again, too. <laughs> How nice. Well, that makes my apology easier. Apology? I came over to apologize for my ungentlemanly conduct. I should not have struck Leroy on the nose even though he insulted me by calling me a sissy. Well, uh, After all, even he who wins the fight loses. Even he, oh, yeah. <laughs> Will you accept my apology, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, yes, of course. I think it's very gentlemanly of you to want to apologize, Gerald. It was nice of you to come over. Thank you. Okay, what are we waiting for? Put on the gloves, Gerald. Oh, Leroy, Gerald came over to apologize. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm sorry I struck you, Leroy. Will you accept my apology? Oh, yeah? What's the matter, scared? Put up your dukes, you sissy. Leroy, <laughs> you go on downstairs and take those gloves off immediately. What? There'll be no fighting. After all, Leroy, even he who wins the fight loses. Oh, for course sake. <laughs> I'll get going, young man. And when you come back, I want you to apologize to Gerald. Apologize? Certainly. And you might try being more of a little gentleman, like he is. What a character. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't think it's possible for Leroy to be quite like me What? Well, at least that's Mr. Bullard's theory Bullard, eh? What did he say about this? Well, he said it wasn't Leroy's fault that he behaved as he did mm -hmm. He pointed out that Leroy hasn't had the advantages and training that I've had And Mr. Bullard says it's difficult for water to rise above its own level What did he mean by that? Well, I don't know exactly what he meant but he said in this town, the level of the water commissioner is quite low. Oh. <laughs> I know what he meant. We'll show him. Leroy. Now that spring is just around the corner, your folks are probably longing for some of those really fresh-tasting, springy-tasting foods. For instance, crisp salads, fresh vegetables, and that month-in, month-out favorite, wonderfully fresh-tasting Philadelphia brand cream cheese. 
Yes, this cream cheese is always so exquisitely fresh. Every day, creamy white Philadelphia brand is made fresh in craft plants from coast to coast. Then it's rushed to food dealers in ice-cold trucks and cars. That's why genuine Philadelphia brand is guaranteed fresh by Kraft. And Kraft makes this famous cream cheese from fine milk and thick cream to give it a glorious richness that adds so much to your meals and snacks. Try it tomorrow for extra good luncheon sandwiches, for fresh-tasting fruit salads, or for really grand, easy desserts. Just remember, there is only one Philadelphia brand cream cheese. So when you buy, look for the words Philadelphia brand printed right on each silvery package. Then you'll be sure of getting genuine Philadelphia brand, the cream cheese that's guaranteed fresh by Kraft. Well, let's get back to the problems of the great Gildersleeve. It's been hinted that Leroy lacks the social graces and talents of the little boy visiting the Bullards. And not one to ignore a challenge, we find our water commissioner determined to remodel Leroy overnight. In fact, sooner than that, he's going to do it this afternoon. Uh, that Bullard, insinuating, I don't know how to raise my boy. Leroy, you've got a lot to learn before that party tonight. Do I have to have the old party? I want to call it off. You will not. You invited Brenda over and you'll have the party. And you'll outshine that Gerald or I'll know the reason why. Gosh, what do you expect me to do? Well, for one thing, you can learn something about politeness. From who? What? <laughs> Leroy, when it comes to the social amenities, your old uncle isn't exactly a bumpkin. You can observe me. Now, let's stop in at Peavy's and get the ice cream. Okay. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Hello, Leroy. Hi. Hi. Leroy, is that the proper way to address your elders? Say good afternoon, Mr. Peavy. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Peavy. Hi. Yep. <laughs> Peavy, I'm trying to give Leroy a lesson in politeness. Okay. He's having a party this evening, and I want to be proud of him. We'll need a quart of ice cream, I guess. Tutti Frutti. Oh, boy. One quart coming up. Tutti Frutti. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Oh, hello, Judge. Well, oh, good afternoon, Judge. Hello, Leroy. Hi. I mean, good afternoon, Judge Hooker. <laughs> I'll be right with you, Judge, as soon as I finish packing this ice cream for Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I am in a bit of a rush. I've decided to buy that new electric razor I was looking at the other day, Peavy. My, that's quite an item. I'll be with you in two shakes of a lamb's tail, Judge. If the judge is in a hurry, why don't you wait on him first, Peavy? Very well. That's very nice of you, Gilday. May I see the razor, Peavy? Oh, very well. You see, Leroy, politeness pays. On second thought, Gilda, there's no reason why I should make you wait. No, no, Judge, we're in no hurry. Go right ahead and make your purchase. No, Gilda, that wouldn't be fair. After you. Judge, please buy your razor. But you were here first. But you're in a hurry. Would you gentlemen care to draw straws? <laughs> Go ahead, Gildy. You're keeping me waiting. I am not keeping you waiting, Judge. I'm telling you to go ahead. After you, Gildy. After you, Horace. Peavy, wait on Gildy. I've been trying to. Don't you do it, Peavy. I insist you wait on the judge. All right. Here's the razor, Judge, and that'll be $20. Pay the money, Judge, and get out. Well, if you two are trying to push me into a sale, I won't buy at all. What, Judge? Good day. Good riddance. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve. I've been trying to sell that $20 razor to the judge for two months. Well, Peavy, you can't blame me for trying to be polite. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Oh. <laughs> Leroy, pick up your feet when you dance. Marjorie, make them pick them up. I'm picking them up, but well, don't put them back down on mine. Gosh, I'll never get it. And you'll never make an impression with Brenda. That Gerald will dance circles around you again. Oh, Lord, can't we stop for a while? The record's wearing out. So am I. Leroy, you have to keep going to learn at least one dance. And a waltz is the easiest. Why persecute me to make a social butterfly out of him? He's your brother, Marjorie. One, two, glide. One, two, glide. Miss Gilsey, I got that little cake for the party. My 
goodness, what's going on in here? Leroy's learning to waltz, Bertie. All right, Leroy. One, two, glide. One, two, glide. Glide, Leroy. Don't slide. You're dancing, not playing baseball. <laughs> One, two, glide. One, two, glide. One. Mad, mad. This house is getting crazy all the time. <laughs> Enough. Leroy, when Gerald steps up to play the violin, you're going to step up to play Tchaikovsky. Now play. Okay. But every time I come to this part, I make a mistake. See? That's C sharp, Leroy. Right here, the black key. You've been making that same mistake for five years. Put on. Keep practicing, Leroy. Mama, what's going on now, Miss Gilsey? Leroy learned his waltz. Now he's getting his Tchaikovsky down perfectly. C sharp, Leroy, for heaven's sake. Why you got Leroy playing and dancing, Mr. Gilsey? Boris Heights coming to town? No. <laughs> he has to outdo that little Gerald at the party tonight. He does? Yes, Mr. Buller doesn't think I've taught Leroy anything. And we're going to show him. C sharp, Leroy! C sharp! <laughs> Lovely dinner, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, we're glad you enjoyed it, Brenda. Aren't we, Leroy? Yes, Brenda, we're glad you enjoyed it. It was a very good dinner. My compliments to the chef. You, you, uh, yes, I'll tell Bertie. <laughs> well, how about a little after-dinner entertainment? Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Gerald, did you bring your violin? No, I didn't think of it. But I could run over and get it. Oh, no, you don't have to do that. We'll have other music. Oh? Leroy might think of something to play on the piano. Although he hasn't touched it for quite a while. What? Shh. Go ahead, Leroy. <laughs> Don't be too modest about your talents. Okay. What are you going to play, Leroy? This is a little number by Tchaikovsky. Yeah, uh, Tchaikovsky, Gerald. <laughs> Russian. <laughs> oh, I-, I just love Tchaikovsky. It's so morbid. And not the way Leroy plays it. <laughs> Proceed, Leroy. Hope he makes that C sharp. <laughs> Very good, Leroy. <laughs> uh, here it comes again. Very good, Leroy. I didn't bring my violin, but I play the piano, too. What? You do? I'd like to play an excerpt from Defiance Fire Dance from the ballet of L'Amour Brujo. L'Amour Hoo Hoo? <laughs> well, I wonder if we haven't had enough music for one evening. Oh, no. I'd just love to hear Gerald play the piano. Uh, this is one of the more descriptive passages. Who? Uh-huh. God's a young Orson Welles. Oh, that was marvelous, Gerald. Thank you. Oh, yeah, very nice. Yeah, all that practice for nothing. It's, uh, well, uh, why don't you ask Brenda to dance, Leroy? I'll put a record on the phonograph. Oh, that's a wonderful idea, Mr. Gildersleeve. Sure. Well, imagine this. The first record I picked up was a waltz, the Blue Danube. Come on, Leroy. Okay. Uh, yeah, pretty good. La, 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 Mr. Gildersleeve, we can't dance to that. Yes, we wore the record out. <laughs> Turn it over, 
Mr. Gildersleeve. There's a good tango on the other side. Uh, um, tango? Trapped. I better go sit down. The Danube's all I know. <laughs> well, you don't tango, Leroy. Voulez-vous danser avec moi, mademoiselle? No, he's talking French. It's a lost cause. <laughs> Wait, Gerald. Look at Leroy. What? Look at him. He's wiggling his ears. Oh, for Leroy. He is? Oh, let's see you do it again, Leroy. Oh, that's nothing. Gee, I've always wished I could wiggle my ears. I can wiggle one at a time, even. Piggy and me send semaphore signals in school. <laughs> What's this? Will you teach me, Leroy? Teach me, too, will you, Leroy? Why don't you just do it like this? Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, Leroy, I just love boys with talent. <laughs> <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Most folks agree that an extra good dessert can turn an ordinary meal into something pretty special. And fixing extra good desserts is so easy with Philadelphia brand cream cheese whipped. For instance, you can whip Philadelphia brand into a wonderful topping for baked apples or hot gingerbread or cake or pie or fruit. To fix that delicious topping, just put delicate white Philadelphia brand cream cheese in a little bowl, add a small amount of milk, and whip lightly with a fork. And there you have it. Fluffy mounds of fresh-tasting goodness that'll make any dessert very special. Yes, for glorious rich flavor and exquisite freshness, be sure you get genuine Philadelphia brand, the cream cheese that's guaranteed fresh by Kraft. <laughs> Fun. You bet, Leroy. And I was proud of you. Yeah, I was proud of me, too. <laughs> I even made some money. What? I taught Brenda how to wiggle her ears for nothing. But I charged Gerald a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy, you shouldn't have taken his money. You give that dollar right back to him. But, Doc, I want to buy Easter seals with it. Easter seals? Yeah. They told us about it in school. Every Easter seal you buy helps a crippled child. Oh, yes. Well, I'm glad you're doing that, Leroy. Because the Easter seals all of us buy will help eight million handicapped children to walk and play again. Did you buy some, Monk? You bet. And how'd you like to buy another dollar's worth, Leroy? Gee, I'd like to. All right, here's the dollar. Teach me how to wiggle my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. Let's all buy Easter seals. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. The show was written by John Elliott and Andy White with music by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Here's a real bargain. An all-aluminum silent butler, and it's yours for only 50 cents and a Pabstet label. This silent butler is handsome enough for a gift, and it's big. Has a deep, generous size bowl, a long handle, a hinged top that opens at your touch. It's just the thing for collecting cigarette ashes or crumbing your table. Now today, just get either regular Pabstet or the new Pabstet two-pound economy loaf. Your dealer will give you full details about getting this beautiful aluminum silent butler that's worth so much more for only 50 cents. Uh, so, you know, I was just thinking, uh, I think you and me ought to do a radio show. A radio? Finian, I got news for you. We already got a radio show. 